Hey there everyone, it's Braden here for GSHelper.com and today I'm going to show you how to detect how many um, variables or how many integers or how many letters are in a table. So for example, if you wanted to find out how many letter N's are in a table or in a table column or a table row, uh, we can do that now with the new loop over table behavior. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I've created a new project and set the iPad landscape orientation. Uh, we're going to go into the tables tab and create a new table. Now I'm just going to call this demo table for this instance. And we're going to go in and we're going to create uh, five rows. And so in this demo, we're going to search a column to find out how many, uh, for this example, uh, number 11's are in this table. So there should be, when we're done, sh we should get a result of 3 because we have 3 11's in this table. And you can just fill uh, the other cells with whatever value you want. Now this will work with uh, integers or numeric values or uh, uh, if you wanted to use letters, um, booleans will work fine I believe so uh, just go ahead and fill that out follow along with me for this tutorial and then go ahead and do it in your own project uh, after we have that sorted out let's go into the initial scene and we're gonna create one actor and I'm, I'm just gonna call it sort after naming it I'm gonna double click to edit and we need to create a few self attributes we're gonna create an integer attribute which is called uh, which row leave it at zero for right now and then create another integer attribute and call it how many. Also leave it at zero. All right, in your library, scroll down and find the loop over table behavior. I don't know if I've ever done a demo with the loop over table. I've used the loop um, behavior, which can be used to loop over a table, but this one's, uh, it's easier to use. Uh, you don't have to set up as much uh, stuff. And so we're gonna use this one for our purposes today. So drag it into the logic stack and what we're going to do is we're going to loop over our demo table and we're going to we're going to loop over the rows even though we're searching a column uh, for a specific value we have to select rows because uh, there are multiple rows in the table we're going to start at the first cell and end at the last cell so what it's going to do is it's going to start at cell one and i think we have five cells so once it hits five it's going to start over and go back to cell one um, actually that's not what it's going to do it's going to just go through the table once the loop behavior uh, will actually continue to loop until a condition is met that's the difference um, and so it's going to just loop through the table once now uh, we have a blank field here it's called store index in attribute and this allows us to track which row it's currently on and that's why we made the which row attribute. So go ahead and select self .which row and place that in there. Now we're ready to add behaviors to this behavior. And so let's go ahead and grab a rule and we're gonna plop it in there. And what we're going to do is we're, we're gonna use the new numeric expression condition. And we're gonna open the expression editor by clicking the little e. And click on the functions button and we're gonna click table cell value. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say when table game.demo table for row we're gonna plug in our self which row and for column since there's only one column we're gonna select an input one so when it equals whatever we want to find so for this example we're trying to find how many uh, number 11's occur in this table so when whatever cell we're currently on equals 11 what we're gonna do is add self how many to self how many plus one and what that will do uh, is after the table has been looped through we're going to display this so we can see how many times 11 appears in that table now uh, you don't have to display in your game you could uh, take that number and then uh, use it as a condition in a rule or tell the game to do something with that number uh, maybe the player needs a certain amount of uh, number 11s to use in their game, and if they don't meet that criteria, then maybe they fail the level. And, I mean, that's just uh, a really uh, made-up idea, but you get the um, 
idea and gist we're going for. So here we are, we, did, we added the display text to the top of the logic stack and we're displaying how many. Um, and we'll make that a black color since this actor is white. Go back to the scene and drag the actor back uh, on the scene here. Go ahead and click preview and you'll see it's you might be it might be hard to see because of the video recording but you can actually see it change from one two and finally three extremely quickly and uh, it stops at the end of the table and so it's telling us that there are three number elevens in the table now we can go ahead and edit this really quickly so if we only wanted two you'll see it still displays two uh, so that's go how you go ahead and find how many instances of a number or a letter uh, occur in a table. Now there are other ways to do it. You could go the long way and use the loop behavior. And what you would need to do is say when uh, perhaps which row does not equal how many rows are in that table and then you add which row to which row plus one and then you, you check to see if that row has the number 11. If not it'll loop through again or it'll, it'll go to the next row uh, until it comes to the end of the rows uh, and then that's another way to do it but this way is much simpler so I recommend using the loop over table behavior it's new in version 11 I believe and so I hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed it can't wait to see what you do with it and we'll see you in the next video